Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to the Thaumaturge. So, in the last video we started working through many of our uh, urban secrets and stuff like that. We're going to keep doing that. Is that selected? <laughs> We're going to keep doing that today. Because we don't have very many of them left to do. So once these are all done, once our side quests and urban secrets are finished, we can move on to the main quest again. So... Little one over here while we're trying to find out about this secret library. Can I shabang? There's a little rat. Hello, little rat. Hello, I am little rat. <laughs> ah, kill me. Anyways, hi. Happy Wednesday? It's Wednesday today. I'm still recording these episodes daily, which I immensely dislike. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll push through. Letter. Dear Jerovizia. Jerovizia. You ask me how I find living with my auntie and uncle, well, I enjoy a great many comforts here. And in this respect, it is a change for the better. <sighs> I can't remember to breathe at the start of videos. Recently, however, I have observed what some of my uncle's strange habits are. You've probably heard of him. His name is Adam Baluki. Baluki. He has one room next to his bedroom that he doesn't allow anyone to enter. He often carries large packages there. I do that. When I ask my aunt about this, she replies, he has a great collection of insects that he takes great care of. However, I do not believe it. Who would want to collect insects and guard access to them with such fervor? Be sure to visit me because we need to solve this puzzle together. Your devoted friend, Anna. Piece of paper covered with elegant handwriting hidden in a small envelope. But lucky is an eccentric bookseller who often carries large packages to his office, refusing to reveal their contents. Oh, hello. What's this? Have some soda. Sure. A man is walking up to the stall and feels like getting some soda just to express his appreciation for the creativity of the structure's designers. This will be the old style where you have to syrup and you add the gas separately. Obviously, it was a big thing recently because there's a, a little cafe in New York City that still makes Coca Cola the old way, and Twitter kind of lost their mind over it fairly recently. Uh, I wonder if I can do this one over here as well, actually, while I'm here. I've somehow missed it. Uh, but yeah, I'm recording these on the day. So it is Wednesday for me as well. Milk chocolate bar, sweet and perfect for any occasion, from a wedding to a funeral. The refreshing sense of excitement cuts through the aroma of chocolate. Milk chocolate, dark chocolate, chocolate with nuts, all in beautiful shades of brown and beige, complete with subtle carmines of raisins and raspberries. The colours might be associated with the earth, but they definitely taste of luxury. Book at a stall. The Legend of Wars and Sava. <clears throat> A long, long time ago, <laughs> in a place where today a proud city stretches across the Vistula, there were wild woods swarming with large wild game. Aurochs, boars and bears. It so happened that once Prince Katsumids <laughs> visited these parts. Having lost himself in the hunt, he suddenly found himself in the darkest regions of the forest. He roamed for a long time, having lost his way, and just as he was about to lose all hope of ever returning home, he saw a glade. And in the middle of that glade, a small hut. In the hut, he found a poor married couple and their newborn twins. The hosts offered him their hospitality and gave him food and drink. In return, the grateful prince named their children Wars and Sava, and left a purse full of gold for the couple. They soon built a large homestead there, and new neighbours began settling all around them. To commemorate, to commemorate that event, the settlement was named Wazava. Oh, is that the is that the suggestion of that's how Warsaw started? Do you reckon that's true? The drowning of Mozana. It is said that Mozana has snow white skin, wolfish teeth, and sharp claws that she uses to hunt for old folks and children who get lost in the woods during winter. Those who let fear into their hearts should take heed as well. Mozana comes for them in the night, haunting their dreams as an old ugly hag. Luckily, she loses her power with the coming of the spring solstice. That is the time to prepare an effigy, which the women of the household should adorn with fresh twigs on each new full moon, starting in the fall. Then they should carry the effigy around the village, set it on fire, and toss it in the river. The effigy must not be looked upon as it is carried away by the river, for the drowning Mozana must may bring bad luck to those who look at her. Read Poetry our time to spur creativity. Never before have poets constructed such intricate metaphors to outwit senses, making them feel like they're moving in a thick fog. Ah, oh, Byron. Don't trust people who read poetry for fun. 
Uh, I need to get at least a day ahead, though. I keep feeling this weird pressure. Like, today I was going to kind of, like, have a Sebi day off, and now I can't. I'm here. I'm saying words. What a traumatic experience for me. The Warsaw Courier. Pedigree dogs. English spaniels. Puppies by parents. Awarded at Polish and foreign shows. Inquire at the following address. Bukowa Street. We're going to go get a dog. Oh, that's another little quest for us. There's always more little quests. Hello, piggies. Lost parcel parcel with a book addressed Mr. Adam Baluki. Hello. Sweet secret. secret. The parcel is wrapped in grey paper, through which you can feel the embossed spine in hardcover. The parcel is addressed to Adam Baluki. The courier must have lost it. It might be worth returning to the addressee. Adam Baluki lives at 39A Targova Street. Using the activities of the Rare Book Lovers Club as a front, he imports and reads works banned by Russian censorship. If you return a lost package to him, perhaps he'll let you see his library. Hello, sweet secret. I really want to say that in my day-to-day -day life. But then I suspect nobody would ever talk to me again. So now there's two reasons to do it, you know. Oh, I have to wait? Wait, no, what? Let I don't know. Why would I? Maybe? No. Night time, I guess, because we're, we're trying to sneak around a little bit. Yeah, cool. It's the only one where it hasn't been, I would say, immediately obvious. Hello, it's a little doll. Rag doll, made from sturdy cloth, so neatly enough to make it look lively and sleek. <sighs> the needle pierced the thick fabric with resolve and precision. The little seamstress stopped crying. She might not be able to afford a doll, but she would prove she could make something out of cheap cloth that everyone would envy her for. What have we got over here? There's a couple. Is this a viewer needed? Uh, yeah, I'm sure it is. And yet. And yet. Nothing happens. My confusion continues unabounded. What's that one? The synagogue. Roll a gog for the synagogue. Oh, hello. Postcard. Dear Auntie R, I am very happy you are coming. I have to tell you something. The apartment in my brother's house is the happiest place under the sun. I found new friends there. You definitely have to see it. Postcard. A postcard written in child's handwriting. Decorated with drawings. Seems to be something in Mr. Mikuzuski's apartment that brings great happiness. Mikuzuski. I was close enough, I'm pretty sure. What is this? There's a building over here. Curiouser and curiouser. Hello. An eccentric old gentleman in his racks filled with foreign books. Hard to believe he would commit a crime that the Okhrana was sending him to Siberia for. It's still the dream. Secrets. Not on my watch. Tattered book. The Kings of Poland is an old, beautifully illustrated book that's forbidden in the Russian partition. Stuck to an illustration is a thought filled with longing and grief over what has been lost. The pride and splendor of the old Poland, bathed in crimson and gold, falling on the shoulders of monarchs. Rozik Gentry. This outfit is the epitome of Polishness. Boring on the outside, it holds the burning heart of the nation within. This is very relevant, actually. I'll talk about why in a second. Cheap yet sturdy fabrics in the hands of a crafty tailor will gain class, and unobtrusive shades of brown will make a great backdrop for the centerpiece of the whole look. This vest dripping with gold and crimson. This isn't an outfit, it's a manifesto. Oh, that must be, um... Is, do you reckon that's tailoring associated? Maybe. Think so. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. Um, f Poland last night qualified for the Euros um, this coming summer, actually by defeating Wales. So, you know, lots of sad people in my country. Uh, who are you? Crook. Hi, Crook. Anyone can win today. Try your luck and play. Don't give up, ma'am. You'll get lucky this time. You're not a passerby. Thank you, sir. How can I help you? People who play games like this, they always have, um, like, someone in the audience who pretends to be a, a regular onlooker. But really, they're there to hype up the, uh, the game. What's the game? Good, sir. Let me explain. Three cups, one shell. To find it is to win. Simple enough, right? Except I've lost three times already. I'd love to play. Who knows, maybe I'll have more luck. Pretty sure it's a scam. 
You have to wait, I'm afraid. It's the lady's turn. Thank you, sad man. Fortune favors the brave. All right, let's do it. Come back later, sir. You know you've been tricked by a crook. Or even two. What? How is that possible? Why don't you go, ma'am? This isn't your lucky day. Is it time and for a fight? I will have a talk with you, smart ass. Sure is. We'll teach you not to harass hardworking fiddlers. Get him! Hardworking fiddlers. Because what they do... Who has this third guy? Because <laughs> what they do is you just squeeze the cup ever... Like, there'll be a shell under all of them, right? And you just squeeze the cup ever... Whoa, enemy reinforcements were on the way. You just squeeze the cup ever so slightly. And it picks up the shell. So any of them doesn't... I mean, I'm sure people know this. I'm just, I'm just saying for posterity's sake. Juice damage by... Da -da. Juice impact on focus. Juice damage. Um, okay. Jin, do you want to get in here, buddy? Um. Okay, that, I mean, that guy's nearly dead already. <laughs> well, ironically, <laughs> I think I might just plan attack and make sure he... Oh, no, he's, he doesn't take much damage, though. Oh, no, but this is going to attack after the Jin, so that will do full damage. That should kill the guy, actually. Bam! Down he goes. I started to more and more of time focus on um, just beating people up. <laughs> Basically, I don't know how to put it. For just straight up hitting people has its benefits, you know. That's a one hit kill right there. It's mad. Uh. This one, he'll take damage from that, but hitting him's not going to do anything, so. <clears throat> but there's reinforcements on the way. More fiddlers. This guy should be dead. Now, I do have payback on me, of course. And the idea is to hopefully remove it. <laughs> Although I didn't remove it in time, <laughs> so it didn't, didn't quite work. I think we're just gonna stack up some wounds on this guy now. Ah, woo! There we go. Yo! <laughs> He's like the first topless guy we've seen. He just wandered in. Hey, buddy. So, attack with Velus and attack with. Well, okay, I'm going to have to go over here. Lelic or Marana? What's Marana do again? I found Marana was really strong, right? Yeah. Marana can basically... If you've only got one target, I'm pretty sure Marana can basically permanently lock them out. Stop them doing anything. I should have put this on the other guy. The same over here. Oh no, it's not gonna hit. I'm oh, just gonna keep <laughs> keep on this guy, I guess. I'm very excited to level up this one to see what the third level is. I guess it's just on everyone, isn't it? Because at the moment it's on one person, then it's on two people, and then eventually, assumedly, it's on everyone. <laughs> All ticking down. Eight times the missile. 82 damage. Madness. 82. 32 damage, sorry. Just. Oof! Ooh! I just want to see the animation more than anything. And down he goes. I gotta say, these new ones, the new um, Salators, definitely feel strong. Taylor Inspiration. 
La mode Parisienne, 4th quarter, 1905. After the last season dominated by dashing accessories and a cavalier way of wearing classical pieces of clothing, it's now time for restrained outfits that don't stand out, but impress with quality. Famous Lyon columnist F. Bouchard discusses accessories that will be in vogue for the winter season. I do love the winter season. What's that? The hospital. In Praga. Oh, hello, hello, hello. How is there more? How is there just stuff everywhere? <laughs> Dear Mr. Julius, you made me very uncomfortable at the last ball. Miss Jadviga not only comes from a barely respectable family, but she's not even pretty. I really don't understand why you're so fixated on her during all the fast dances while I stood on the sideline and wasted my time in idle conversations with boring aunts. You would like to see me again. Agreed, but on one condition. As a token of your devotion and assurance of kindness, I will accept a gift. At Mr. Mukuzuski's on Brukova Street. Brukova Street. You can purchase a gift that will put me in a better mood. Please do not bother showing up without that gift, well, Mariana. Well. Brief message written on blue stationery reveals that Mr. Mushki on Brokhava Street trades in something the letters author dreams of. Ten Wagging Tales. Mr. Mikuzveski, stop making me say it, who lives at 34A3 Brukova Street, runs a kennel of pedigree dogs. He recently had a new litter of puppies which are very eager to play and be petted. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Bum bum bum. I'll stop that. So we're gonna go. I think this might be the last thing for the tailor. Because he's the tailor. I'll stop that as well. <laughs> it's just a stupid the reference that no one's gonna get. Silk pocket square. A pocket square made of silk woven into a paisley pattern. The pocket square flew onto the pavement, tossed in anger. It was still permeated by the smell of Indian flowers and profound disappointment. This was not how the trip was supposed to go. He was supposed to return with a fortune. The promised success turned out to be a delusion. Mirages. Delusion. Masquerade. Theatre. Things do not appear as they really are. The braid is reminiscent of the military style, emphasizing the silhouette. The paisley pattern is the latest fashion trend, and the frock coat adds gravity. Sometimes you have to put on a disguise, hide one's face, and show another to the world. Oh, can I not get out this way? Hello. Pigeons need to... <laughs> it's like that, that, that maybe they're talking about feeding the pigeons, but in reality, not really. They're just, you know... Wait, why has this got two directions, though? Okay, that's confusing. Wait, what? That's the tailor. Is it just giving me an alternate path, or...? I don't know. I'm going to take the path away from the tailor, anyway, because I'm curious. Oh, some more inspiration here. There is! La Mode Parisienne, first quarter, 1904. The January issue of La Mode Parisienne, blah, 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 <laughs> features vests, overcoats, and frock coats with military-style elements, braids, and stripes. Enthusiasts of Orient inspired designs will also find something to their taste. Oh, wait, what's this? Isn't this my house? I'm pretty sure this is my house. That's my house. Okay, I think we may have uh, two inspirations to hand in here then. We shall find out momentarily. Yeah, people keep talking about pigeons, and I always think they're feeding the pigeons, but they're not feeding the pigeons. People are just wandering around town talking about the fact that they feel. They should have full bellies, the pigeons. Also, is it me, or has this shop started to fill up? Maybe our tailor inspiration has uh, helped him out. Mr. Shulsky, come in. What's new? I've got some fresh ideas for you. I see what it is you are getting at, but the collection still seems to have some missing pieces. Hmm. Please, keep looking. We need bold concepts, unusual combinations, I'm counting on you. Meanwhile, I shall attend to my work. Please, excuse me. Hmm. Yeah, so I got two more. And yet, there is still more out there. You. All right. How annoying. I need to sneeze so badly. <laughs> I'm resisting. Okay, so this is new. And this is new. And those are new. 
That's new. I like the straps on this one. Um, yeah, military. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's not going to take me anywhere, though, is it? No. I don't know if we're ever going to find... Like, it's nearly running out. Like, we're not going to be able to do it soon enough. But I just don't think I'm going to... I don't see how I ever... Find it, you know? I mean, look, it's, it's one of those things. I'm not going to go looking around the entire city hoping I find it. It's a case of we'll stumble upon it or we won't. Simple as that. Let's go get these other things done. We're nearly there now. It's becoming very difficult to find uh, thumbnails and titles and stuff for this game. It's fine when we're doing the main quest and we're finding new salutors and all that kind of jazz, but when it's this kind of wandering around the city... Like, I, I like reading the notes and finding out what's going on and all the sort of the political aspects, yada yada yada. Victim's friend. Hey, you with the book! Tell them they can't keep us here against our will! Go back to the ward! I'm telling you for the last time, the examination's not over. Man, this is a prison state. Even quacks will lock you up. You better stay out of this. Take it from me. Is it all because patients won't get examined anymore? My friend felt under the weather, so we came. But look at him now. Sound as a bell. You came? They brought you on a cart half dead. Probably after some kind of subversion. This is slander! It's better if they stay longer. For examination. You understand? No. These gentlemen had a moment of weakness, but I can see they're better now. Let them leave. Did you hear the man? We'll go then. What kind of underground solidarity is that? We'll put you all in solitary. I have to be able to medics. <laughs> of course I do. I, it felt a little politically motivated, in which case I was always going to suggest that they back off. I am who I am. Uh, reduce impact on focus, that's fine. Everyone always gets this bloody immune to traits one and I can't do anything. <laughs> Just have to rack them all up on this guy in the middle. <laughs> oh wait, no, this one could go on this guy, that's okay. Assuming he doesn't get killed here, which he might. No, he didn't. No triple damage. Alright, here's my beating. What kind of medics are- what happened to do no harm? What happened to the Hippocratic Oath? You know, for the longest time I thought the Hippocratic Oath was spelt H-Y- as in Hippocratic as in, oh, you're a hypocrite. Um, it didn't occur to me that- well, that it wasn't, basically. Uh, Morana, my beautiful. Is that going to hit afterwards? Nope, so we have to go over here instead. I, 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 I didn't know why it would be about hypocrisy in that way, but, um, it was, it's, I don't know, just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out what my reasoning possibly was, and I, I, I just couldn't possibly tell you. I'm going to Google it. Why is it called the Hippocratico? Uh, yeah. Hippocratic. Oh, I should know this since I did biomed, but whatever. I'm sorry, I need to sneeze at the same time. A Hippocratic oath is an oath of ethics taken by physicians, widely known of Greek medical texts. Just it means swearing to uphold standards. Yeah. Blah, blah. Oh, because it's originated from uh, Hippocrates, who was a Greek physician. Thanks. That makes sense. Where did you get savage like that? Why are you so curious? Give him a break. We owe him that much. We were outnumbered by the Ruskies. That's all you need to know. Let's go before you tell him the story of your life. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> Medic's just lying on the ground. Uh, I'm glad we did the right thing, I think. It's going to be about the hospital, maybe. Anyways, there's nothing to do with hypocrisy. Although maybe hypocrisy comes from Hippocrates. Spacious rooms filled with people with empty eyes. The smell of ammonia, laudanum, and fear. Staff with tightly clenched jaws and a firm resolve not to look people in the eye. It's hard to say it won't hurt. Everything will land well. I mean, you know it's not true. I remember when I was applying for med schools. Um, the only one I got into. I'm not even sure how, but I had to do this... Um, what was it I did? I, so I was doing an interview with these two women. And... Um, one of the women was evaluating me or sort of directing the conversation and the other one was pretending to be it wasn't a patient it was just to see how I handle things in general and it was that her rabbit had basically I had been put in charge of her rabbit and like I was house sitting for the rabbit basically rabbit sitting I suppose and I'd left the gate open and the, the rabbit had done a runner right and the idea was I had to console her, a woman who was blaming me, you know, as doctors and stuff were often blamed, and how I would handle the situation. And she was in hysterics. <laughs> Why she was acting on this level and not like a professional actress is beyond me. She was incredible. <laughs> she proper broke down. It was very, very dramatic. It really was. I was impressed. And I'm not sure I handled that aspect. Oh, I didn't get into that one. Although I don't think I got in because I kind of scrapped off my degree, to be fair. Uh, it's Cardiff that I did. Cardiff was an interesting one as well. That was like a triple interview. That was a much nicer interview process. Much much more chill. Much more welcoming, I would suggest. Let's go get a puppy! It was a real catharsis. For those several minutes, I actually believed the world was good and beautiful. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> a dog will make you believe. Look at them. <laughs> I think a dog will make you believe that. Right. So let's go find out what the Upia wants. Because this is a time. But this is a side quest. So this should be a little bit more involved. I'm imagining this is like in uh, Act 1 it was, where we're going to go into our own memories again. You know, when we went to the train station with the kid. It was with um, a Bonichi. I'm going to get a dog. It's high on my list of things to do when I move. Also, I can farm it for YouTube content. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> benefits. I've got to remember. Yeah, I keep saying that. Um, I'm confused why these aren't working. If I don't have a quest for it, it means I can't do it. It's as simple as that. I'm a little concerned. So many of these scenes are going to be disappearing soon. Like, why would the looking at the buildings one disappear unless I'm leaving the city? Interesting. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah, there we go. Where are we going? I'm not going that way. I think you aim for the white fog. I think that's the, the trick. And the teacher said, Victor, is the rat here in the classroom with us right now? <laughs> I almost pissed myself. I laugh all you want, but I really can see it. I can help it. I love a red lamppost. Victor, promise me that the whispers of these salutors. I didn't. Ah! I only kept running because I couldn't see them. Oh. Alright, from now on, I just stop. Whenever I hear voices, we just stop moving. You'll see! My Uber will order you to eat your own brain! I'm telling Mom. All your temper turges are crazy. Not wrong, Lucky. Yeah, not long. This way. Hmm. <laughs> Defeated by a small bush. Not for the first time. But the, uh, the bazaar, the market. I wonder why. Hey, buddy. I've been carrying it with me for half a lifetime. 
I remember there was someone else here. He wasn't happy. When was he ever? He thought I wasn't ready yet. Miss, maybe he was right. Hmm. Oh, and <laughs> I have emerged from the dirt. Oh no, we've got more. Oopia stuff to find out. Off we go. I do remember seeing him somewhere else as well. From where it was. Yeah, the bazaar. That made sense, I suppose. It's a problem with recording every day. <laughs> Nothing has happened since yesterday. <laughs> I haven't had new thoughts about life. <laughs> uh, have I had new thoughts about life since yesterday? I don't know. I have, I've had to order more melatonin. I've run out. The I don't sleep without it. Bashka has a stand around the corner where she sells moonshine. You've got the money. I've got the will. Everything fits. The evening is set. You're a real strategist, brother. Oh, brother. I start taking 10 milligrams of melatonin every night to help me sleep. Otherwise, I'm doomed, basically. Um, but, oh, it gives me weird ass dreams. <laughs> That's really the main downside. My dreams are always terrifying. Then, the bald guy looks to his left, looks to his right, and poo smacks the cop right in the face. <laughs> Calm down. Don't go hitting me now. Has anyone ever told you that you get overly excited about certain things? These two really haven't changed, have they, since childhood? <laughs> they are basically the exact same. Abirishi in them, in particular. I mean, my victor's a little bit more forthcoming. It's not an excitable sort. Generally speaking. Name. Shulski. From those Shulskis? Well, well, your daddy will be happy. Just like my daddy when he hears that I've been leading little Victor down the wrong path again. Shut your mouth, punk, or my deputy will put a precautionary bullet in your right butt cheek. Mm. 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 Get there eventually. Boris who wanted to show me his father's store. He picked a bad moment. I didn't need thaumaturgy to feel his shame at that moment. We can go. Now I'm ashamed of what I felt back then. I felt superior. That's where the floor of pride started to swell. I've never really... Oh, we've got more from the UPA. Jesus. I've never really got that. Like, my dad is very successful, relatively speaking. Um, I guess n not to the point where he's, like, super mega rich or anything like that, but... Nothing more successful than most people. What um, do you want to tell me, friend? But... It's your parents. Like, why does your parents' success reflect on you in the slightest? Why is it something to be proud of? I've never got being proud of... A, like, you can be proud of someone in a... Hey, I'm proud of you, because it makes them feel good. You've done a good job, yada yada. But being proud of someone in that if inflates your own ego in some way is nonsense to me. Unless, it, like, if it's your child, I can see it because you raised them, right? I didn't raise my dad. <laughs> if my dad does super well, it isn't a reflection on me whatsoever. There's no reason for me to be proud, or like, to, for me to lord it over other people, depending on what my family do. You know what I mean? Just nonsense. But, you know, kids. My old man will kill me when he finds out this was our doing. Don't go yellow on me now, brother. First off, it wasn't our doing, it was mine. Second, keep a lookout if anybody's coming. I have to focus. Said Samin's a prick. Look, it's so pretty. You've made the eye a little crooked. Look at this. See, the thing is, Victor, protected by his family name and stuff, is more willing to engage in this kind of thing because he faces less consequences. 
Aberishi has clearly had a uh, slight change of heart, given what he has to go through instead. I drink raw, don't need no snacks. I'm not making a deal, we're negotiating. I don't. Ah, ah. Well, at least I'll be the right way. Victor, get it through your fucking head. I don't give a fuck about the Shosky family money. This is a matter of my pops and my honor. All right already, calm down. I have a different plan. What plan? Because if Sataniswaf is involved, I'm out! Calm down, it's not like that, but we have to get into his office. So I'm assuming this is building up to where they shoot the guy. Aberishi's dad is in trouble with uh, the mob, or with the shark, the uh, pawnbroker, money man. I don't want to see it. We didn't realize what we were doing. We were still children. Mieszko Setsemin was a scoundrel. He ruined many people's lives. This is my pride. The same you clung to, barely discovered, but it was what pushed me into it. It got the better of me at the time. Are we all like that? Is every thaumaturge enslaved by the floor? I was tormented by guilt for a long time, but eventually, that event made me who I am today, didn't it? Does anyone ever wonder what? Oh, nice. Like we all think we'd react certain ways to certain things, right? Like I always have feelings about how I would react. In a zombie apocalypse, as all guys do, <laughs> all people do. Um, I've got a little bit I'm writing about that, like with a stand-up comedy routine, actually. But it is what it is. Um, do, 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 do. But I'm sure people have wondered this well. Like, let's say you killed someone. Let's say you had a good reason to kill someone, like that situation there, right? Where they are, you know, it's a lone shark and they're hounding your father and threatening all this stuff, and you kill them. Most of us haven't killed anyone. Most of us will never kill someone. And we all think we'd handle certain things in certain ways, but I'm always curious... I'm always just curious, how, how would the reality play out? Because we always like to think of ourselves in certain ways. Like, everyone likes to think they're brave, and that they stand up for social justice, and that they protect people, and everyone likes to think they get involved, right? And everyone wants to think they're going to look out for people and all this kind of jazz. Everyone thinks... Nobody wants to think of themselves as a coward. No one ever thinks of themselves as the person who looks away. However... Every time someone's getting beaten up on the streets, or there's a fire, or anything, 99% of people walk on by. 99% of people do not get involved whatsoever. I remember collapsing at a bus stop by a bus full of people. <laughs> I had to phone an ambulance myself, and all these people just ignored it. I was passed out on the ground, and everyone just went on with their day. And that was nothing, that was no danger to themselves, but that's especially the case when there's a danger to yourself. Like, let's say you see someone on the street. There's someone, a guy, is getting jumped by three or four guys, right? If you alone get involved, what are you going to do? What impact are you going to have? You know? Um, the chances are, you just get beat up yourself, <laughs> right? You don't necessarily too much and for you know that guy's getting beat up for a good reason but that's neither here nor there so people always weigh that up like maybe if all of you get involved you're fine but the point is people are scared and people protect themselves and everyone likes to think they're self-sacrificing and brave but when push comes to shove as we see time and time and time again that's not really how the reality is i i'm, I'm the same way i always like to think i get involved and i i have in the past but not every time necessarily, and there's definitely going to be situations where I probably wouldn't get involved. I'm sure, but you always want to think you will. It's interesting. You just people are very sure of themselves, and then the time comes and 
suddenly it's not the case anymore. And you never do know until it happens. And people can say until they're blue in the face, Oh no, I know I would do this. I know I would do this. I know I'd act this way. And you just don't. You just don't know until you're in the situation. Anywho, map of the Bavarian Alps. With notes and trails outlined in pencil, someone has studied it in depth. A head full of plans for the next hike. Which trails are a must and which can be skipped? There isn't enough time for everything, as long as you get to see the Chamoy. Perhaps you might even to manage to take their photograph. I would love to do some form of mountain climbing. Maybe not Everest, because Everest has become very... Sounds weird, but Everest has become very touristy. <laughs> but um, I think it would be very cool to do some mountain climbing of some description. I'd have to work on my fitness more, but still. Alright, let's have a look around this church. Prayer book. Contains prayers spoken during exorcisms. The pages of the prayer book are read from often, although the words are written on them have already engraved themselves in memory. The same prayers are often used for various cases of alleged possession. I'll sit down seems to be my mission, weirdly enough. Candelabrum. The candles aren't burning. The candelabrum must be ritualistic, lit only on special occasions. Incense. It continues to emit smoke. The suffocating odour is difficult to bear. This is the uh, clergyman. Words repeated continuously like a mantra, regularly, often, and with great excitement, still hover over the incense smoke. Attempts to chase away Satan. Cries to heaven, beseeching divine intervention for souls possessed by various evil spirits. I've got things to say on this as well. I've got things to say on everything. <laughs> Orthodox rituals. Exorcisms are held regularly in the sacred space, conducted by Father Kirill. The clergyman follows his learned routine and does not take particular care to identify cases or actually help to tormented souls. Oh no. <clears throat> There's a bit of a um I can't remember. <coughs> Excuse me. A lectern used in Orthodox rites and for taking confessions. Oh, apologies if you can hear that noise. Someone is mowing their lawn, it's very rude. Echoes of a whisper remained atop the lectern. The confession that Kirill had heard. A confession or a silent cry for help. A desperate plea for hope. Sinners. Icon with the countenance of a Tsar Nikolai II. He looked at the icon for a long time, straight into the Tsar's eyes, as if interrogating him, perhaps looking for inspiration. He stepped away from it with a plan formed in his head, though the icon hadn't answered. Chair. A wooden chair, nothing but it stands out. Her heart was pounding in trepid oh Serena. Her heart was pounding in trepidation as she sat in her chair. Words of the prayer brought no solace, nor did Christ looking calmly down at her from the icon. The fear for the entity closest to her in life overshadowed everything else. The Serena visits the Orthodox Church, most likely incognito, seeing as no one is talking about it. Her confessor is Kirill, from whom she seeks help for her troubled heart. Her thoughts are full of fear. Interesting. Make sure there's nothing else. Um, obviously in like the 60s there was a whole satanic panic kind of thing. Um, obviously Manson family stuff didn't help. Well, I think most people now are logical enough to realise that Satanism isn't really something to be scared about, right? Obviously, as with any religion, there are branches of Satanism that are maybe less favourable, but, you know, that's true for every single religion that's ever existed. Um, Satanism is largely pretty cool, and I don't say that in an edgy way, I just mean the tenets that define Satanism are largely pretty sweet and kind of fit most people's lives I would suggest better than modern religions do in general um, but there's a little bit of a satanic panic creeping in I'm seeing it more and more it's becoming more and more of a right-wing buzzword at the moment satanism stuff like that like they think the cartoons are promoting satanism and stuff like this and no one can really say why satanism is bad they just know it's anti-christian so of course it's a terrible thing <laughs> I mean, wasn't the separation of church and state, like, fundamental to the United States, and yet they all seem to be ignoring that lately? Hello, Father. I haven't seen you here before, young man. You look exhausted. Thanks. What brings you here? I must have gotten lost. I don't know yet where my path is taking me. Are you a believer? Mm, no. Be warned, I'm not religious. And yet, your feet brought you here. I sense you have doubts, questions, so ask. You're an exorcist, aren't you? I've heard you regularly drive Satan out of people here. Yes, it's true. Does it often work? If the flame of Doubting Thomas flickers inside you, 
You can soon witness the miracle of exorcism with your own eyes. Is there anything else I can help you with? My mystic one, did I say? Do you really believe that nonsense, Father? That demons dwell inside people? Is that calculation? Or habit? I think we aren't so different from one another. I don't question the existence of your demons, Thaumaturge. I had to ask. It did seem a little Is hypocritical. Still something troubling you? <laughs> They'd need to kill this bloody echo filter that's sticking on every indoor conversation. It is mad. It makes it so difficult to understand what's being said. You get some peculiar guests here, Father. There is room in God's house for everyone. It's no secret that Salina Alexandra is particularly God-fearing. Do you know her well? As well as a confessor can. So, quite well. If you're looking for gossip about her Imperial Majesty, you've come to the wrong place. There are plenty of people at Groshitsky Bazaar eager for such chit-chat. Unless I can help you with something else. What is the Church's position on thaumaturgy? That's a fairly difficult subject. There is hope for all, even for those who live in great sin. So, in your opinion, Father, being a thaumaturge is a sin? It's not up to me to say what's a sin and what isn't. But there's hope for everyone, young man. Do you know Grigory Rasputin, Father? He also visited this place not long ago. Rasputin. I haven't seen him here, but yes, I know him, and I remember him well. It's impossible to forget someone like that. How do you know one another? From back in Petersburg, he was looking for protection, posing as a great preacher, but I was suspicious of him. He was nothing more than an ordinary charlatan. Just talking about that man sullies the palate with sin. Why do you ask about him? No reason. Besties. Friend from Petersburg. During a conversation, Kirill revealed he'd met Rasputin in Petersburg. He doesn't think very highly of him. In fact, he demonstrates hostility towards the man. Rasputin tried to ingratiate himself with the local clergy, but he didn't succeed. Rasputin has been to the Orthodox Church before. On top of that, he knows Kirill, though he didn't mention it. What is he scheming? Definitely something related to the Tsar whose effigy he was gazing at so intently. I feel as though this is not an <coughs> accidental meeting. I'll be off. I'm sure you have more urgent matters to attend to, Father. I'll be here if you want to talk. And remember, darkness does not exist without light. If your demons are real, then so is God who cursed them. You completed the quest, very veiled with holiness. Oh. This felt... I don't know, I don't know what I expected. I thought more for a side quest, but I suspect this is maybe going to tie into the main quest in a fairly big way, actually. Do 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 Church? Church? No, church. Anyone who visits St. Mary Magdalena Orthodox Church, regardless of social status and class, can feel important, if only for a moment, or even the most important. It's not hard to feel that way when treading on the ornate carpets surrounded by statues made of pure gold and icons painted by the greatest masters. The interior of the Orthodox Church is impressive and its majesty elevates all the faithful to the status of seraphim, even if it's just for a fleeting moment. No wonder the clergy who hold office here think themselves so close to God himself. Serena Alexandra has chosen St. Mary Magdalena Orthodox Church as a place to fulfil her spiritual needs. It's here that she has a regular confessor, Father Kirill, and her fav hiccup, and her favourite place for religious meditation and her favourite kneeler, where she gives herself over to prayers for the health of her ailing son. Body, stop it. Control yourself. <laughs> right. Well, we can't do Taylor's friends. Dilemma. Uh, let's go to this one first. We've got two main quests. Find Father's friends. Konechkin claims that the Black Grimoire ended up in the hands of Father's shady friends, known as the Coterie. If I manage to find them, I'll get what's mine. Aren't these the guys who were, like, fighting for Polish independence, though? I don't know, whatever. And we'll keep an eye out for Taylor stuff along the way. I'd like to finish the quest. Not necessarily because I care about having more outfits, because you just don't really notice them anyway. But, um... You know, just, I, I want the Taylor to have all the inspiration he needs. You know, he's a good egg. 
Where are we going? Oh god, I'm tired. <sighs> oh, I slept for like ten and a half hours last night. And yet, I am always tired. <laughs> and yet, I never sleep. It's very confusing. I just have to pound the melatonin. Where are we going? Are we going home? We're going home. Okay. Maybe we're looking for like a phone book or something. Oh, there's stuff in here. Go what we can. The sun is still shining oh. and I have things to do. Oh, when does that ever stop me, Victor? When does that ever stop me? Neatly folded letter. Dear Miss Zulska, let me be honest, you are not my first choice, Rude. Your face is common, your excessive independence and tendency to wear pants are disturbing, and the annoyed expression frequently present on your face makes your eyebrows look like two angry badgers. Moreover, you are intelligent, which bodes no good in a woman. We both know living with you will be a source of incessant migraines and nuisances. Still, I'm willing to offer marriage. I think that in the aforementioned circumstances, my offer is more than generous. Please do consider it. Ignancy... Vokulski. Okay. I suspect she won't be going for that anytime soon, though. No? God, it must have been horrible being a woman back then. Well, not as necessarily that much easier now, but still. Is, is this on the other side? It's on the other side, isn't it? Old letter. Generic letter. Strange someone kept it. Beneath the neat letters pulses a deeply hidden thaumaturgic message. Are you looking for a Kabbalist outside of Warsaw? Don't bother. One of the best is closer than you think. Isaac Sofa of the Nozik Synagogue. Property deeds. The list of father's properties. A lot of them, but most are well-known addresses in and outside the city, except for one. Curiouser and curiouser. Cylindrical medallion conceals a protective incantation in Hebrew. The words engraved on the amulet exude regret, and the message enchanted in the locket whispers a warning. The echo of Golem's curse smells of dark Kabbalah and remorse. I feel something else. A trace. I recognise it. It was in the ruins of the tenement house under which my father died. I have to find their meeting place. Sweet secret. The box is seemingly empty, yet at the bottom rests a clear and precise thought that wasn't left there by accident. It was laid out carefully by the skilled mind of a thaumaturge. The message is short. Let us meet. Interesting. A suspicious address and a message that only another thaumaturge could read. It smells of mystery and conspiracy. This is exactly what Kanishkin and Svetlana were talking about. I should check it out. Check it out I shall. But there's something else over here. Something else up there. Kabbalist text. It's long and convoluted and describes how only the sons of Abraham can create living bodies out of clay. It stinks of misogyny. He slams the book on the desk and violently turns its pages, tearing the paper between trembling fingers. He's vexed. Great word. He pauses to think about the curse of Abraham that was placed upon him. There must be a solution. There must be. Oh, but there wasn't Stanislav. love. Golem's Genesis. Rabbi Sofer from Nochik Synagogue cast the golem curse on father. Interesting, especially given the fact that two were seemingly friends. On the other hand, destroying important relationships was father's favourite pastime, so it doesn't surprise me. If I want to get rid of the golem, I should go to Mirov. Oh, oh, are we okay? That made me nervous. <laughs> Every time a game freezes like that, you know something's, it's either saving or something's kicking off. In this case, it was saving. That was an informative little trip. You know, the fact that I... There's like several viewpoints I'm missing. I just don't have the... Um, the uh, the photo things. Which I find surprising. Because where the heck could they possibly be? You heard me. Where the heck? I went there. I'll go there again. I live there. They should have put a plaque there for me. Can't remember the line. Hello. Sweet secret. <laughs> Dear Lucia, after a long journey, I happily arrived at the hotel and have already managed to make myself comfortable. It's true what they say about its impressive exquisiteness and comforts. There's a sizable ballroom, a restaurant with elegant decor, and a lovely indoor garden. And best of all, you don't have to climb any stairs to get to your room. Perhaps you could join me here. I'm staying for two more weeks. Oh, I got a quest. 
Postcard with a view of Marienst and a message written on the back. The author mentions an elegant Warsaw Hotel. Apart from other comforts, you can find alternative ways of moving between floors. The Crystal Elevator. Let's get this done while we're here. Oh, more things. There's things everywhere, man. Dear Anthony, I remain in good health. Although the traveller life is slowly taking its toll, the humid air here and the sultriness are becoming too onerous for me. Or sultriness? I've started considering returning to the country. I still have some last minute matters to tie up here, including the one I wrote to you about in my previous letter. I finally achieved my goal, and Warsaw will soon see the dreaded demonic masks. We even managed to set a date, September 15th. I hope we will see this extraordinary spectacle together with serious regards, Constantine. Okay, we've got another quest. <laughs> Message written on ornate stationery with a drawing of an elephant. The traveller Constantine boasts that thanks to him, September 15th, Warsaw will have an opportunity to see an extraordinary show from a distant country. Just found, wandering around, two more missions. They're only little baby missions though. Baby mission do 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 baby mission do 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 baby mission do 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 baby mission Architect sketches and a letter Warsaw twelve oh three nineteen oh one the SR I confirm our arrangements from yesterday the design of the gallery is very elegant and we accept it without reservation however the Grand Hotel should have something that will dazzle guests budget of of no Budget is of no concern. Please consider Mr. Lowe's idea. Respectively, Stanislav Roskowski. Drawings made in pencil depict a lavish interior. Accompanied by a letter, the owners of the newly built hotel wanted it to feature something that would amaze its visitors. Such as a crystal elevator, I suppose. Dear Mr. Lubecki, I'd like to ask you to inspect the electrical installations at the Grand Hotel. Time is important to us, vital you finish before the official opening of the hotel. Please contact me as soon Hello, as possible. Sweet, sweet secret. secret. <laughs> sort of message to the engineer, modern electrical installations. The new Grand Hotel has a feature designed for splendor. Powered by electricity, it allows you to travel comfortably between floors. Of course, elevators themselves would have been, I suppose, a novel idea at this point in time. Neckerchief, pretty, must be satin. She took his favourite neckerchief and rushed ahead, must be Alan Grant, ahead toward the park and the shrubbery. She gripped the black satin in her hand and felt butterflies gathering in her stomach. He was probably chasing her, at least she hoped so. Hello? Abuichi? I'm not here for you. I'll be back in a minute, buddy. A crystal elevator, a successful combination of art and engineering. Beautiful. Looks like Abarichi's got a new quest for us. I keep meaning, like, I keep saying, oh yeah, it's time to, <laughs> it's time to get the main quest going. And then I just keep stumbling upon things. Oh god. Stretch. This is fine though, gives me more time to find the tailor things. So, next video we will, um, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Um, I think I'm going to save points I get. Oh, these cost three. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. <laughs> Increase inflict damage by 100, though. That's crazy. Um, 150. Oh, right, but it's got a self-cast thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we'll, um, no, we'll end it there. Thank you very much for joining me. Next video, more quests. <laughs> Cheers much of as always. Bye-bye.